This, ladies and gentlemen, is what roads looked like at the start of the 20th century. Horses and buggies sharing the road with the occasional early motor car. Just 50 years later, everything had changed. Gas-powered cars completely dominated the roadway, and the American family was the two-car family. We went faster, farther, more frequently, and we all ended up in traffic. Today, we are hitting reset on the automobile yet again. Cars are becoming smart, and some are even driving themselves. And this is great news. Self-driving and smart cars will save thousands of lives. The AAA Foundation estimates these technologies could prevent 40% of all car crashes. It won't be long before the human-driven classic car is the oddity, and single car ownership will likely become just a footnote in our human history. In just the last century, the automobile industry has hit the reset button on the car, not once, but twice. But what about the road? My guess is that most of you don't spend much time thinking about the road at all. It's essentially the same road we've been building since the 1950s when President Eisenhower first built the interstate system. There's been almost zero innovation in the road in over 70 years. I mean, think about it. Our kitchen appliances, your microwave, is now smarter than the road. So roads are still made of concrete or rock, petroleum, and tar. They cut across acres and acres of empty land. And when we think about roads, most of us first think about the unending traffic and then the air pollution. And it gets worse. In 2017, nearly 40,000 Americans died on our roads. Did you even know that many people were dying every year in car crashes? Why is this okay? I'd say it's past time to reboot the road and the technologies to move us forward, to help us hit the reset button on the road itself. Well, they already exist. And today, I get to tell you about three of those technologies. My name is Allie Kelly, and it's my privilege and my honor to be the executive director of The Ray, the only nonprofit organization in the world running a living laboratory for transportation technology on a public highway. So why The Ray? Many of you might remember Ray Anderson's 2009 TED Talk about how he revolutionized carpeting and he completely reimagined manufacturing and he changed the world by proving the business case for sustainability. Ray proved that you can do well by doing good. But no one has done this for the road yet and that is what drives us. The Ray is a memorial highway named in Ray's honor that follows that same path. How can we start over? How can we demand more from the road? The Ray is asking, how do we get to zero carbon 
zero waste, and zero deaths on our roads. And like Ray, we've discovered those goals are not impossible. We have the innovation. We have the technology at our fingertips right now to make a road that is safer, that is smarter, and that is sustainable. We can start by paving our roads in a way that not only cleans up the environment, but also provides a safer driving surface. We can start by paving our roads with scrap tires. Yeah, you heard me right. Scrap tires. Each year, Americans throw out more than 300 million tires that in many cases end up in illegal tire dumps. And these dumps can lead to life-threatening tire fires that burn very hot and are extremely dangerous for firefighters to put out. And when tire dumps aren't burning, they provide the perfect habitat for mosquitoes carrying and spreading dangerous viruses like West Nile and Zika and yellow fever. This liability can be transformed into an asset. Repaving just 13 miles of interstate with rubberized asphalt recycles more than 50,000 scrap tires and it nearly doubles the life of the road. Because you see, rubber roads are resilient roads. They crack less frequently, even in extreme heat, brutal cold, and heavy rain. That means they're also less expensive to maintain. And when it rains, a rubber road doesn't flood. The water flows through the road which means there's less splashback, there's better visibility, and there's less skidding and hydroplaning. Also, rubber roads are quieter roads. In many cases, those noise barriers that we build between our communities and our highways, they wouldn't even be needed if we would repave our roads with scrap tires. And this is just one thing that we can do right now to revolutionize roads. Now, let's take it a step further and let's imagine roads and interstates that multitask. Let's imagine a road that can generate clean, renewable energy. At a rest stop on the Ray, you will find the first and the only solar road in the United States. This 50 square meter pilot section of a solar road called the Wattway generates enough energy in just one year to power the average American house. Can you imagine your driveway powering your house? And what about all of those acres and acres of empty land on either side of the interstate? Three states, Oregon, Massachusetts, and now Georgia, are building solar power plants alongside the interstate. When we use land that was previously wasted and unproductive, and we use that space to generate clean energy, we can transform the entire roadway system. Take a minute and picture a map of highways in the United States. 
I don't just see roads. What I see is the future of our energy grid. It's modern, it's secure, it's way more efficient. It's optimized for renewables like wind and solar. It runs along our interstates so it connects our communities with clean energy. And it enables breakthrough transportation innovation like wireless electric vehicle charging while you're driving in a lane on the interstate. And there's also an economic benefit to using all of that public land to generate energy because you know, we fund transportation and infrastructure with a gas tax. And we know that gas tax is gonna dwindle over time. It's inevitable because electric vehicles are becoming more and more popular and more and more prevalent. So we can enable our governments to generate their own revenue using this land through leasing the land or even selling that energy to utilities. I have one final road revolution to put before you today, and it's probably the most important because it involves our safety. Roads can be smart. We can pave a road that listens to smart cars and talks back to them. Now, I don't mean that literally, but this is what I mean. Our roads should become connected along with our cars. Just think of all the data and all the information from the road that can help make driving safer, that can help make work zones safer, that can help us to understand how weather interacts with the road and changes driving conditions. We could identify road repair needs like potholes by the road telling us itself. We could ease the traffic and the congestion in our cities, and we can make way for emergency responders when they're trying to get to someone in need. New technology developed by the Ray enables the road to communicate with drivers through color. Drivers of any car, including those who are driving classic cars that don't have the benefits of autonomous systems and connected systems. So amber lights can tell drivers, slow down before an accident that just occurred, or white lights could guide drivers through heavy rain and dense fog. So today we've talked about three technologies that can change our roads today and make them safer, smarter, and cleaner. And I just scratched the surface. Our roads can do more. They can save taxpayer dollars. They can bring massive amounts of renewable energy to the grid. They can reduce our dependence on foreign oil. And yes, roads can save lives. Roads can be a vehicle, pun intended, for good. So what are we waiting for? Come on. Let's drive the future. Yeah.